$90,132 of income, $386 of income taxes. I love this job. I love this job. Has anyone else ever guided you like I have here? I'm sorry to be cocky. Has anyone ever done like I've done? No, no one has. Buy me a coffee, man. Buy me a coffee right there in the freaking show notes. You'll see the doobadoo to buy me a coffee because this this makes me happy that people are getting it and also makes me say, you know, I'm doing good work here, man. Now, you might not like my conspiracy theories, all that. That's fine. I don't care. It's just weird. You know, Josh, you have so much sense when it comes to finance, but everything else, you have no common sense. I know, right? The common sense just stops the minute. Non-financial stuff, the common sense just stops. It's kind of weird how you're so smart here, but everything else, you're dumb. Okay. Anyway, so check this out. Here's my man. We'll call him Bob. Bob, 90132 of income. His tax is going to be 386 0.43% effective tax rate of meters on almost 100000 bucks. He says, I thought I understood how to figure this out. After looking at this, I'm wondering what I missed. I haven't factored inflation. I know the numbers will be somewhat different when I reach 70, but I'm just looking at ballpark numbers. I've watched probably all of your old basement whiteboard tutorials. Loved them. They're coming back, maybe. They're coming back. And bought three of your books. We're putting off filing for Social Security until 70. I'm retired. Currently, I've passed my FRA, 67 this year, and my wife is 66. I w she should go ahead and file. Uh, she's at FRA. She should file for hers if she has any bit of it on her own record. But anyway, we'll keep talking. We're covering my expenses with my IRA. Pretty easy to do with no house or car payments, plus have solar that pays my highest summer bills, electricity, in Phoenix. All right. So here's his income. This is with his delayed earnings credits. That's 70. Here's wife's half his PIA, so we can quickly figure out his PR, PIA is about 3300 bucks or so. So his wife will get half of his PIA, about 30, 1676, hold on a second, 1676 divided by 25, 3350. So his, his PIA is 3350. Uh, his wife will get half of that 3350. But he's taking his full, his, uh, benefit, his own retirement benefit at 70, so his PIA will grow for 3350. To forty-three thirty-five, so Social Security would be seventy-two thousand. He's get a small pension. And he's going to take IRA distributions of twelve thousand. So that's his income right there. All right, that's the total income. It's not his taxable income. This, this is the total spending power before taxes. So we got to figure out our provisional income to figure out how much of our seventy-two thousand one thirty-two of Social Security is subject to taxation. Remember, what we're doing with provisional income is the first step in the tax. The Texas, the tax uh, two step. How much of your Social Security is subject to taxation? Don't just default to say 85% of your Social Security is subject to taxation. That's a huge mistake. So, how we figure that out is with this provisional income. We take half of our Social Security benefit, 72,136, five by two equals that, plus all of our other income. He's got $12,000 IRA distribution and 6000 coming from his pension. So his provisional income is fifty-four thousand. Again, his total income is ninety thousand. His provisional income is fifty-four thousand. Come down here, and we see the first thirty-two thousand of his provisional income is not subject to any taxation. The next twelve thousand, fifty percent of that is. So we know that between thirty-two and forty-four, six thousand of that is subject to taxation. Anything above forty-four thousand, eighty-five percent of that is subject to taxation. So again, the first, the first bucket here or it's not really a bend point i guess bracket that's what i'm looking for whatever it's thirty-two thousand. so you got fifty-four thousand, thirty-two thousand right here that's his total provisional income thirty-two thousand is the first bucket if you will of how much of his social security is subject to taxation that's zero right the next twelve thousand dollars fifty percent of that is subject to taxation which is six thousand the next amount eighty five percent of that is subject to taxation which is eighty five hundred bucks so of his 72,000 of social security income, only 14,500 is actually subject to taxation. All right, so we scroll down here. We take his taxable social security, 14,556, plus his pension, plus his IRA distributions. His total adjusted gross income is 32,000 bucks, but he has a standard deduction of 28,700. His taxable income is 3,800 bucks. You don't believe me? We're going to show you in right capital. All right, so here, I'm going to show you right quick. We got Sue, Susie and Bob Sample, all right? 
I'm just going to go over to profile. I, 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 this is, I wish people understand this. So we got, let's say Bob's got uh, 500,000 bucks in an IRA, 401k, doesn't matter. All right, we're going to go to income. Uh, we have Bob's social security is 3,300 bucks. This is PIA, but he's going to wait till 70 to take it. Susie has her own benefit of, uh, where was her benefit right here? Like 900 bucks a month on her own record, which he should file. And this guy, whatever this guy's name is, uh, Barry, I don't know. Uh, he should file. He, he should have his wife file if she has any benefit whatsoever. So in this case, Susie's got a small benefit and she's at FRA. So she files to get something on the board. And then once Bob files, Susie's benefit will increase with spousal benefits. Got it. So Susie got 900 bucks of Social Security. And again, uh, that will increase to half of this right here once Bob files. All right. And that will be a 70. All right. Bob's got a pension like we just talked about. Or Barry, doesn't matter. 6000 bucks a year. All right. So now we got goals. How much do they need to live on? Well, I got them living on $40,000, $4,000 a month. That on top of we still need health care. I got them living on about uh, another 1000 a month on health care. And then they still got... Um, property tax and homeowners insurance. So you got property tax and homeowners insurance and another 400 bucks a month or so. All right. So I hope that makes sense. So now we're going to go to retirement and we're going to go to cash flows and we're going to show you. It's pretty simple. So in 2023, they got 10,500 coming in. That's going to be from Susie's uh, social security. Again, not a huge amount, but we'll take it plus Bob's pension. 10,500 coming in. They need 75,000 to live on. Why? Because they got four thousand. Oh, that's a proposed plan. Let's go to the current plan. Yeah, well, I'll even show the the proposed plan too. They need uh, they need uh, sixty thousand. Uh, that's basically a little bit more than five thousand a month to live on. Why? Because they got four thousand dollars a month of uh, day to day living expenses, the housing costs, and the health care. Sixty two thousand seven forty three. But they only got ten thousand five hundred coming in. So the rest is going to come from Bob's IRA, his re retirement accounts. So here they got ten thousand five hundred. Plus fifty six thousand dollars from the IRA, which which will cover this thirty seven hundred dollars in taxes. Everybody with me on that so far? All right, so check this out. We're gonna go to proposed plan too. I'd say it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to throw you a couple different numbers out there, so you can see. It's, here we got ten thousand five hundred coming in. They need seventy four thousand to live, seventy five thousand to live on. They don't have enough coming in, so they need to take the rest in their portfolio. All right, so here we got our total outflows are eighty thousand dollars, which includes five thousand dollars of taxes. Now, I got them living here in Georgia. No state income tax there because they don't make enough money. All right, so they're paying $5,400 on $80,000 a year in income. Divide by 80. That's a 6.75% effective tax rate. Not too shabby. All right, but it's going to get better. Let's just go back. Let's stay here. So now, look at this. In year 60 right here. Here's year 70 right here. Bob's first full year of Social Security, all right? Here's his first full year of Social Security. You'll see that when Bob files, so Susie had her own retirement benefit, 11000 bucks, but when Bob files, it increases. She still keeps her own benefit. It increases, though, because she now gets a spousal benefit. No, before Bob filed, no spousal benefit. Bob files and a spousal benefit kicks in. This is why, in this, that guy's case, he should have his wife file if she has any benefit because, you know, 11000 bucks, 11000 bucks. So now Bob files. Susie still retains her benefit, but she gets a, an addition by what's called a spousal benefit. So now we got 70000 bucks of Social Security. Everybody with me on that so far? And we got $6,000 of a pension. So between Social Security and pension, that's $76,000. 76000 bucks. They need eighty, basically 83000 to live on. So they're going to pull $5,600 from Bob's IRA. And you can see what I'm talking about. We go to accounts, Bob's IRA, we go to withdrawals from accounts, and you can see right there the amount he's pulling from his IRA. All right, so again, they're living off $82,000. The bulk of that's come from Social Security, but they need about $11,000 from his pension and IRA combined to make up the difference. So now we're going to go to the tax form, and we're going to show you the 20, was that 2025, I think, right here. Yeah, so here's here's their uh, no, it's not 2026. I think it's way full. There we go. So here's his Social Security, seventy thousand of Social Security, plus their IRA distributions, plus the pension. All right, of that seventy thousand of Social Security, only eighty five hundred is subject to taxation dues. I, I cannot stress this enough. 
So 8,500 plus a pension plus the IRA distributions, their total income from a 1040 perspective is $20,000. Now in reality, it's a lot more than that because we have 71,000 of social security. But from 1040 perspective, their total income is 20,000 bucks. Standard deduction, $25,000. Their taxable income is zero, which means they have no taxable, they have no taxes. I'm gonna show you another video here. Uh, Annette had emailed me about some various counties that you don't pay property tax if your taxable income is less than 12,000 bucks. And we just showed you how to make your taxable income less than 12,000 bucks just by maximizing social security, which means you don't pay any income tax. And in this case where Annette was looking at moving to, you're not gonna pay property tax either. How freaking awesome is that? People don't know this though because they don't pay attention. They're too fearful. Like, oh my goodness, this uh so now we're going to say when Bob has RMDs, let's go to RMDs right here. He's got 15,000 required distributions plus his pension. That's $21,000 of income right out the gate plus his social security. So we know he's going to have over a hundred thousand dollars of income, but only 21,000 of his social security is subject to taxation. All right. So we take our 20, basically 22 plus our other income. We got about $44,000 of, of uh, total income. But he's got over well over $100,000 of real income, but $44,000 he's showing. All right, take away our standard deductions. Our taxable income here is about $15,000. All right, so that would give us a problem if we're looking at uh, maximizing property tax reductions because of our taxable income. So in this case, if he had over $15,000, he would be subject to some property tax in this county in Alabama. And there's other counties that do the same, which I'm going to look into more. But either way, $82,000, $88,000. That's uh, so $104,000 of income. He's paying one, uh, he's paying tax right here. Total tax right there at $1,500. I mean, dude, it's, it's just, you can't argue this. It's just a fact, man. These are just a fact. So what I'd probably do in this case, if I look at the property tax, I'd probably, what I'd do is I'd pull a little bit more out in this, these areas here. Um, because in this case, our property tax, we're not going to get a property tax deduction because our taxable income would be over 12,000 bucks. So let's just look at that. That'd be 2000, let's say 2023, our taxable income, yeah, right here. Uh, 69,000 pulling from IRA because he's not on social security yet. Um, he's got, his wife's got a little bit of social security. So his taxable income here is gonna be uh, 48,000. So I'd definitely pull more out. So that way I can have to pull less out when RMDs come in uh, because of the, the property tax exemption in various counties. Dude, it's, I just tell you, man, if you're used to living off $80,000 a year, you can easily do that if you just you know, maneuver this without any taxes whatsoever, if you just know what you're doing. And a lot of people know. A lot of people say, it's stacked against me. I got to go to the Philippines. Okay. Whatever, man. If you're using, the whole reason I started my YouTube videos, a guy down here named Wes Moss. I like Wes Moss. I don't follow him, but I mean, I like him. Yeah, I've seen him do some YouTube. I don't know if he's still on there or not. But he had written an article in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, basically assuming that the retirees are going to pay about 25% effective tax rate on $85,000 a year in income. I said, that's nuts. You're not, you're not paying anywhere. That was literally one of the first videos I ever done, ever did. I said, that's, that's just not the correct. Mary finally jointly on $85,000 of income isn't paying an effective 25% tax rate. I, I couldn't believe it. That's what started me on the whole YouTube thing right there. So I congrat, I thank you, Wes Moss, for doing that. This is six years ago, man. And I don't have any animosity towards Wes Moss. It was just it was wrong. And uh, hopefully he's to correct himself. Because if you say you're, we're going to go into retirement planning with an effective tax rate of 25,000 to 25%, and you're making less than 100,000 bucks, that's just incorrect. Now, love your thoughts. Don't forget, buy me a cup of coffee, man. And we'll see you in the doobie doo. See ya.